out there tell me exactly what's so dangerous about a big airplane? The boom! The boom could kill! I have a film! Sort of fab gear, pop art t-shirts made out of targets and hearts and things like this. Because the group is a fairly simple form of pop art, we get a lot of audience this way. Off stage, the group get on terribly badly. There's a lot of despite and things which flash around. The singer's a shepherd's bush geezer who wants everything to be a big laugh, and, and when it isn't, you know, he thinks something's going wrong, terribly wrong. The drummer is, is a sort of completely different person to anyone else I've ever met. We do some rock and roll. Some oldies. Screw you then. What? If you're not going to put me out to learn it, I'm buckling if I'm going to play drums. Oh, Keith wants to do his out to learn it. Titanic and several air crashes. I think you'll have to give me a few lessons in survival because we aren't, if I'm going to yes, survive well, this yeah. interview. When I went to get my ears tested, I thought it was really encouraging, apart from the fact he said I had <laughs> terrible, like, terrible ears. <laughs> he said, Bill said, to him, well, what advice would you give him? Would you tell him to stop playing entirely and leave the group? Go oh, throw his career out throw the window. Throw his career out the window, would it... become a pauper, starve. Would you tell him that? Well, no, actually, no, but uh, I, I would advise him to learn to lip read. Which it typically is his new stage clothes. See ideas, see, it's all like to do with you know all the new moods and current the work going forward. What, what it is, but does that magic? It's there? probably we're drunk. It could be what? not drunk, teeny boppers. I know, I mean, absolutely not. You don't need Marie Pans, but, and uh, a lot of medicine, yeah, absolutely. You yeah. know, just a lot of medicine. We're getting on, we're getting you know, on now. Getting we old. need our medicine, so, so you know, so okay. you could marry either. Either. We we're both married by the same attorney at the same time to the same people. One of those wicked weekend romances, you understand. But it happens in rock and roll, it happens in everything else. People think just going rock and roll, we're different. We're not different, we're the same. Just a bit sort of changed now and then. <laughs> and over here, the guy plays the sloppy drums. Follow <laughs> the yellow brick road. What's your name? Keith. Keith? My friends call me Keith, you can call me John. Uh. And this is a... <laughs> <laughs> Got sloppy stage hands around there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's enough. They're gonna sing my generation this song. What's your opinion of your public image? I think it sort of varies with every record I put out. I think sometimes the 
Could you get on with it? Keep, will you keep it together? <laughs> no, I think I'm very reliant on my uh, management and my public Did relations people. Uh, personally, I mean, I wouldn't go out there up front with nothing to protect me but a small microphone. But uh, he manages to like, revolve it so fast that, that when people do throw things, uh, he gets sort of desiccated egg and uh, sliced tomato. Uh, I turn my symbols up this way so that uh, at the end of the night I have a salad mixed. Chief, uh, Chief, you want to come over here for a second? Chief, come over here just for a second. Sure, what do you want? You know, you guys do get frustrated out here on the road, and just a bit that's bit. why here at the uh, Hewitt House we're proud to tell you that when you stuff, dead fish into our air conditioning system the smell permeates the other rooms for months go to it boy it's good to have a guy like keith here because he is a master at this sort of thing you know stick it right up there and you know folks here at the hewitt house we don't bolt our tv sets to the floor our tv sets are loose our TV sets are loose and free because we know you rock stars do like to throw television sets into the swimming pool. Let me help you with that, Kate. Right out the window. You take the final toss, buddy. Ever thought of writing your own songs? What? I mean, instead of always doing crummy Cliff Richard songs, you ever thought about writing your own? No, not really. I can't write. Anyway, you've got to be American to write rock and roll songs nowadays. Well, it's the words, isn't it? Well, all right, Uncle Tom. Take it away, son. Sleep, okay, sleep with me, sleep with me a little bit. Are you okay? Oh, well, if I was ill, I wouldn't be asking, love. I, I can see you're very fit. You'd better introduce the next people in there. Okay, well, the nominees for the best new male vocalist are Dan Fogelberg, Michael Murphy. I'm all right, this new fellow. Yeah. Just. It pass. <laughs> Try it, yeah? Crossbow, yeah? Yes. Uh, I just had a quick interview with Mr. Keith Moon, who's the uh, drummer with your group. You won't have a long one with him, yeah? Yeah, yes. Yeah. You feel like putting him in my pocket and never letting him fade away, you know? Hey, uh, maybe you need this. Oh, I don't know. No, I don't drink. <laughs> I don't drink. This is in a head. You Australian slag, piss off. Uh, <laughs> Fortune going to your head, Mr. Moon. It was Mr. Keith Moon, the fabulous drummer from the top pop group, The Who. I've got a telegram from the lads. We finally made it, Keith. And uh, everybody that uh, has given us this prestigious award is enhanced by the beauty of your receiving it for us. <laughs> I've got an open invitation to any of the houses, so afterwards, the best looking in the audience will be selected and will be going there for a late luncheon and an early breakfast. Thank you so much. family as well yeah. yeah but it's been written up as you know a great deal that as as individuals you all don't all get along that well uh, well is that true or is it not true we're going to be another the other two members of the group but you know we had a bit of an altercation in the lobby at the hotel and they're both <laughs> and they now, wouldn't come they're in general are you serious hospital no. now <laughs> one of them's got a broken leg it's one thing you can guarantee is that he is never serious <laughs> he's not no only when no. he's crying Oh. <laughs> you. oh, Tommy, 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 can you hear me? Can you feel me near you? Tommy, can you see me? Can I help to cheer you? Oh, Tommy, Tommy.
Tommy. If you touch my bleeding seat, Does he sleep? No, hey. Hey, he's getting stroppy now. Does you leave his sleeves alone? Personal them, eh? Can't touch the interviewer, can we? Hey, no, he's in command, did he? Can make everybody else look a right twit as long as you don't have a go at him. How long you been happily married? Ladies and gentlemen, this guy is an amazing sort of guy. Look, look at that table. Look, beautiful, beautiful. You know, we take all the credit cards here, too, at the old Hewitt House Hotel. What a master he is. You got that credit card here? Great, Pete. Beautiful. We'll just take this one here. Hey, thank you. What's up? Great. What a guy. Beautiful guy. with your goldfish the goldfish well I mean you know even the best drummers get hungry not officially no. no would you uh, like to show me that yeah, my dear boy I follow me splendid well as far as I'm concerned from the outside it looks like a normal coach well that's the that's a general idea this is the sort of the way that we fox people but allow me to uh, show you inside to our special arrangement. Thank you. After you. Oh, I insist. No, 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 no. After you. Oh, okay. Thank you. And stupid, stupid boys. And the winner is him. No, it's not him. Uh, it is in fact. It is in fact. Oh, sorry. I'll read that again. I'll repeat that. From the top stupid, <laughs> stupid fellas, we are. Oh. Come on, that's We do try and ignore each other. We thing, we've always been very close, you and I, haven't we? No. <coughs> well, one of the most things that I've loathed the group is, is that Keith the group and I have always had no history. Well. And I've hated one it ever since I've been doing the bulk of the writing. Since I've been doing the bulk of the writing. Since I've been doing the bulk of the writing. 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 I've been doing the bulk of Norman Gunson uh, from the uh, Norman Gunson show. Are you Australian? Yeah, that's right. I don't want anything to do with your Australian faggots. Thanks. Now, will you please leave me alone, you great poster? I do, you Just know. leave me alone, you fag! I, oh, well, 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 to be the only member of the 32-member entourage that we carry with us to have a waterbed. And I thought, terrific. You know, thank you. And I phoned up the road crew, and I was on the seventh floor, and I phoned up my own personal boys and said, what we're going to do is to pick up this two-ton waterbed, two tons of water, put it in the lift, send it up two floors, and when the lift doors open on the ninth floor, the thing is just going to come out and explode, right? <laughs> so, like, that was the plan. So I, oh, I phoned up the road crew. What made you think, of, that? Made oh, you think well, of doing that? I, you know, I was so tired of looking at the same wallpaper, <laughs> speaking to the same operator, you know. Right. So I said, okay, fellas, there we go. Um, what we did, you know, we, we, we managed to get it halfway out of my, the, the little thing, you know, that it was encapsulated in, mm -hmm. the waterbed surround. And um, we got it out and the, the damn thing burst. And I was like sitting in a chair because I was, you know, I was saying, okay, forward, forward, forward. You know, I don't do any manual work on the road. <laughs> <laughs> For God's sake, I'm an artist, this right? You know, true. Heaven forbid any, anything manual. But, <laughs> you know, I mean, I could dig roads. But... So I'm saying, okay, left a bit, left, and all of a sudden the thing burst. And I'm sitting there, the water came up to there in the room. <laughs> and next thing, the water went, shoom, and the, fr the ceiling oh, no. in the room below it had given way. <laughs> and then that went through, and the ceiling in the room below that. <laughs> So when people say, Keith, have you ever smashed up a hotel room? I said, yes, well, three in one fell swoop. <laughs> How did you find Keith Moon? How did we find him? Yeah, sharp He found us, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Chemistry just gelled from then on, didn't it? We, on the tour, we, we kept on feeling his presence. And, uh, 
there's this pigeon in the studio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you think this might this be... Could be... This could be... This could be shades of deep blue. Well, he's got his back to us. He's got his back to us. Yeah, the jokes aren't good enough. <laughs> No, it's quite strange because it's, you know how, you know, when you miss somebody really badly, you tend to kind of invoke their presence. That's what we were doing. We were kind of invoking his presence. We, kept, we talked, and then we found that the best thing to do was to, was to deal with it directly, to talk about him to the audience. And then it was okay after that. But then the first concert, uh, R R Roger came off afterwards and was spreading this story about actually having f felt that he'd been touched, physically mm. touched by somebody. <laughs> and I looked around and there was nobody within yards. Did you feel that? Yeah, we, 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 was, uh, we were doing the end of uh, Tommy, which is a, a piece of music, and it's see me, feel me, touch me, heal me. And I, was, I always think it with my eyes shut. And where did he touch you? <laughs> well, it's <was, it> <laughs> strange. It, it's a, uh, it, it's happened a lot in our career. Fans run on stage and they get, kind of get hold of you. That's happened a lot in our career. Anyway, I was singing this song, See Me, Feel Me, Touch Me, Heal Me. And I had my eyes shut. Someone came up and did that to me, like that, and, and it went. Anyway, there was no one there this night, and it bothered me for about three days. And, and we, we did about uh, four shows. And I actually asked my manager, I said, Look, this has been bugging me, but when we were performing on the first show in, in, in Glen Falls in New York, did anybody come on stage and get hold of me when we were singing See Me, Feel Me? And he said, no. But I tell you, there was someone there, and they gave me a cuddle. And it was the weirdest experience I've ever had in my life. He obviously doesn't get enough cuddles. Phantom it cuddles. It was wonderful. <laughs> I mean, who it was or what it was, I don't know. But it was definitely something. John, you, you have a reputation of being the solid, reliable hub of the group. And yet you <laughs> shared the room with Keith, didn't you? I was the only one that could put up with him. <laughs> like it. Yeah, I'm surviving as well. Yeah. Encouraging. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. You're, I know you're writing a book about it. Can you recall the, the merriest romp that you and he had? Uh, well, there was once when we were in uh, Jackson, Mississippi, which isn't really the place to get up to any, anything in. And uh, we were particularly angry with this motel because there was no room service and the people had been rude and we'd been insulted in the lifts and truck drivers were chasing us around the car park and uh... Used to happen. Keith, Keith had a bunch of cherry bombs which are like little red pieces of dynamite with a green fuse. Just happened to have it. <laughs> <laughs> so he said let's do something to the hotel. You know I hate this place so I, I said well Poor hotel. let's if we put if we light a cherry bomb and put it down the toilet and flush the chain it'll go along the pipes and blow up the local sewer. So you think, like, yeah, then we won't get blamed for the damage <laughs> a mile away. So we went into the hatred makes people's brains stop working. <laughs> <laughs> we went into the we went into the bathroom and uh, I stood ready to flush the toilet. And Keith lit the bomb and threw it, and then we watched it spinning round. <laughs> and it didn't go in. I looked at him and he looked at me and we just ran. Yes, <laughs> the door. And this is Ridiculous explosion, and, and it sounded like powder trickling down. And uh, we opened the door, and there was just a hole. <laughs> so we rushed out, and we went to the, the closest nightclub and hid. You know. And about half hour later, I turned around, and my suitcases were next to me. <laughs> and the manager was standing there saying, great fun, love it. And he said, uh, you can't stay here in this state because I phoned every hotel so you've got to travel 500 miles to get out of the state before you can stay anywhere and I think you found a hotel about it. It's great for Roger and me. Mm. And uh, talking about all that I was wondering uh, Heard the now word. you really tell us the truth and stuff like I know. Yeah. It, I mean the truth is you want to hear it? I can't do that. You couldn't afford me. <laughs> 